Yes, hello folks, welcome back to the program. We are marking the, fa the first talk show of our day today in which we're talking about stunting, one of the most pressing health issues that requires serious intentions from stakeholders and governments. Now, apart from nutritional uh, deficiencies, the equally important contributing factors are inadequate maternal knowledge, poor sanitation, and limited healthcare access. Fortunately, a non-governmental organization called 1000 Days Fund Foundation aims to prevent stunting problem by focusing on children, maternal health, and also strengthening community-based health system in Eastern Indonesia. And their mission is for zero stunting in 2030. That is a big goal and we're aiming for there and joining their efforts right here. And right here in our studio, 1000 Days Fund Foundation Chairwoman Ibu Rahima Abdul Rahim. Good morning, Ibu Rahima. Such a pleasure to have you on board in our studio. Thank you so much <laughs> for having me. It's a pleasure to be up this early in the blue sky. Oh my gosh. Oh, the sky's outside. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry about the morning wake up, Paul. No, no. But hopefully that uh, you are here to enlighten, uh, enlighten the issues also. We're Absolutely. now shift focusing ourselves to the Eastern region of Indonesia. Now, before we go to your foundation, Ibu, mm -hmm. can you share with us how is it right there, reality on the ground in the eastern uh, region of Indonesia? So, we focus mostly in the eastern part of Indonesia, specifically in eastern Nusa Tenggara, and okay. our entity, um, and where the highest um, prevalence of stunting is in Indonesia. 30% still of children that are born are, are, um, ha are, are stunted. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, this is something that is that sometimes escapes our attention, but and, and unfortunately some of the um, interventions have not been targeted. So that's, um, that's one of the things. And, and we have community health care workers on the ground, but a lot of them are untrained, mm -hmm. um, unsalaried, and, and don't have the adequate information or training um, to uh, provide information for, for the community, for mothers um, and, yeah. and, uh, and for those. Um, that are pregnant. Yeah. Um, yeah. And of course, stunting is such a main important issue and also the uh, one of the number one kind of agenda in the healthcare mm -hmm. yeah. uh, system in Indonesia mm -hmm. by President Joko Widodo and also his ministers. And regarding to that, why did you choose to focus on the eastern province of Indonesia? Because of the high prevalence okay. and because of the lack of um, infrastructure or human resources mm -hmm. to, um, to adequately um, uh, you know, target the, the issue. Um, one of the things that we really wanted to, uh, why the eastern part of Indonesia is, is that's where we will be able to see the impact because mm -hmm. of the high prevalence. We wanted to see how much of the, the interventions that we're introducing can see impact, mm -hmm. and we have seen that. Okay. All right. So, can you tell us more about the organization? One thousand, uh, one thousand days. Like, mm -hmm. I mean. Um, why 1,000 days and like how are you guys involved yeah. with all these stunt things? So first of all, the 1,000 days. The first 1,000 days of a child's life is the most important. Yeah. That's when the 80% of the brain growth happens. Mm -hmm. So if you are not providing the right nutrition for these children in those 1,000 days, then it's irreversible. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then um, they, they, can, they can suffer um, you know, throughout their life. But if you provide the intervention from very early on, even from when the mother is pregnant, yeah. even from pregnancy, you can prevent this. Yes. And then th the, th the first thousand days in that child's life, if we can provide good nutrition, good hygiene, then we can prevent that. Mm -hmm. Because it's like a chicken and egg, right? Uh, which one comes first? Because yes, it's from you know people would think it, you have to be more aware when the mother was you know the baby still in the womb, pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you take it back when the mother you know coming through their adulthood or during childhood. Do they get you know exactly. great nutrition yeah. going back again? So it goes. So it's like, cyclical. Like, it's yeah. very cyclical. If you yeah. if you don't if you don't prevent it, then it, yeah. it is cyclical. If you don't have a, a healthy child, it grows up to be an unhealthy mother, mm -hmm. and then yeah. Exactly what you said, Caroline. It's yeah. it's very cyclical. So we have to make sure that we can we can prevent stunting, and it is preventable. Right. But first of all, you need to first create that understanding. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that we are very concerned is this notion, this narrative that to prevent stunting is just to throw food mm -hmm. at it, or yeah. just to provide food. That's not the only thing. We have to change that narrative. I think the 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 interventions that have happened thus far is is providing food. Mm -hmm. And that's not, that's, that doesn't, um, that's not sustainable. Yeah. And also some of the food, unfortunately, that's provided is not really um, nutritious for the child. Yeah. So first of all, we have to create that awareness. 
healthcare workers that we have trained. We've trained 54,000 healthcare workers to date from when we started in 2019, and they're the ones that are providing that education, providing that awareness to mothers, to the community, to children that are now under two, mm -hmm. to ensure that they get the proper nutrition, mm -hmm. proper hygiene, mm -hmm. getting the right vitamins. All of these things are very important, especially in that first thousand days. Yeah. And how do you change the mindset of the community itself, mm -hmm. Ibuima? Because we know sometimes people will say, well, you know, I chose and I opted for, you know, this kind of food. It's just because of it's more affordable or it's more reasonable. And maybe for those kind of food, you know, sometimes it's hard to get. We know the Eastern, you mm -hmm. know, part yeah. of Indonesia, infrastructure-wise yeah. and whatnot, it's still very difficult. And how do you kind of like prevent and kind of yeah. switch their mind that, yeah. no, you can, you can grow, the, yeah. grow these things. Yes. I'm going to sound like a broken record, but it's the community health workers. So, kader okay. kesehatan or health cadres. They're the most important. If we train them and they're continuously um, working in these areas, they're the ones that can provide information on perhaps, you know, healthy, nutritious food isn't, doesn't have to be expensive yeah. and doesn't have to be unreachable. It can be found. When you have, you know, in these villages where you have fertile land, sometimes, you know, we city folk, we want to go into the, you know, yes. rural areas. Actually, that's where we'll find the fresh air. Yeah. You can find vegetables, you can find protein um, that is affordable. Mm -hmm. Yes, oftentimes, it's always the easy way, right? Yes. yes, instant food or formula is easy, but it's not good for the child. Yeah. So to ensure that we are able to provide that continuously, sustainably, these community health workers need to be trained as more, and, and, and that's kind of our program, training these community health workers. So we have cadres um, in, in, in the villages that we have, um, that, uh, that we operate in, in, uh, in East Nusa Tenggara, and they're amazing, right? They're the ones that are actually eager to learn, and we're really, I mean, some of the stories that we hear from them as well, because they've been trained before, but they haven't been adequately trained to provide this kind of information. And so they have come back to us and it's like, thank you for this training because this is really, it's simple. And oftentimes when you give, when you, when you present it in a simple way, mm -hmm. when you present it in what we have, our tools that we provide with, for them, the smart charts, the smart blankets, which provides that information. So these cadres can put it up in the homes and then um, present it to these families and they yeah. can read it, they can yeah. see it. Oh, this is what, um, this is what good nutrition is. Mm -hmm. This is how much a child should grow um, when they're this age. This is how much they should, uh, this is how, what they should be eating. Like charts. Exactly. Yes. And perhaps with more training, yeah. so we're hopefully, um, you know, keep us in your minds uh, when, we, when we launch Kader Academy um, yeah. soon, later on this year, wow. it will be an online platform where we're not only trained healthcare workers, yeah. but we'll hopefully be able to certify them as well to ensure that they are, these are the ones that will carry this forward. The healthcare workers is the way to prevent the stunting because it's the simplest way and the most sustainable way. How do we get to zero to 2030 is ensuring that this is in the mind of policymakers, that this is in the mind of philanthropists who want to help in the yeah. eastern part of Indonesia, help us to train more healthcare workers that will be able to provide this right kind of information and, um, and, and awareness about stunting. And this can be preventable just by, again, as simple as these, um, these healthcare workers are teaching kids to make sure they wash their hands. Mm -hmm. Hygiene yes. is part of this. Yeah. And even, even mothers to make sure that they are, you know, as much as we try for exclusive breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. It's not easy, but yeah. these community health workers are hopefully going to be able to find a way that these things are doable, yeah. right? And hopefully that's that's what will. They're the agent of change. Exactly. Exactly. The superheroes. Exactly. Now, can you paint us pictures, like, because I, I, you know, in Jakarta we have, we're very privileged. Like, I mean, like, uh, like I never we learned are. any of this. Like, when I have my daughters, like, I learn it just like, oh, we get the books and like the charts and everything yes. like that. So, I, like, that's I'm right. exposed to like, you know, like every other week, like, I, I bring my daughter, I brought my daughter. To hospital for her vaccination yes. or whatever and then like, the doctor's like oh your baby is like the weight is good and stuff like that can you paint us a picture like how how was it before 2019 or when to, during 2019 mm -hmm. when you guys came into around east nusa tenggara how's the situation over there i mean like you mentioned like er, earlier like they, yeah. they're not eating um nutritious food yeah and then like what kind of food do they eat and like why are they not exposed to any of this information i, I mean it's, it's yeah. kind of like it's kind of funny in a way thinking like the health workers not knowing like those kind of things that yeah they, they... i mean 
they probably have basic information, but um, but again, oftentimes because aid is delivered, mm -hmm. um, you know, from from different different sources, right? right? And oftentimes it is food that is donated. That um, again, for for maybe to, for it's easy, right? right? To to because it doesn't spoil. Yes. Um, it, it, it's hard. It's easy to it's easy to prepare. So instant food is oftentimes um, the go-to right. because, as you pointly um, said earlier, it's 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 less costly for them to, yeah. to buy this, and it's easy. But the easy way out is is not the right way out, okay. right? Um, and so, before you know, we used to go. Um, the team at Thousand Days Fund used to go from door to door to find out. Um, so the team, before we introduced these interventions, mm -hmm. had already gone from door to door to find out what it is that they eat, um, what it is, what it is they're lacking, what is, what are they not getting from the local pashandus or the the clinics um, in the region? What are they not getting from the healthcare workers? They all, 66 percent of 66 percent of women still rely, of a woman and children rely on pashandu. So if they're relying on Poshandu and these community health workers, it's our responsibility to ensure that they have that knowledge. Before that, they might have the basic knowledge of perhaps, you know, oh, uh, you know, you need to breastfeed, you know, this is good for you, or maybe, maybe basic nutrition. But the term stunting, they didn't know this. Mm -hmm. You know, this, yeah. this became a word that then, you know, we, we found the prevalence of stunting and, and we saw it and we, you know, we also didn't go, didn't go into this knowing how much we would be able to um, have those interventions to um, to drop the rates, yeah. right? We didn't know whether these the the interventions that we were proposing with the tools would actually um, have much impact, but it does have impact, and it's simple things. It's not anything that we know that we don't have to bus in or truckloads of of food or anything like that. It's very simple interventions. And, and it lies in the human resources that are already there. There are 1.5 million health cutters in Indonesia, and many of them are not aware of these simple interventions. And so that's why we're Thousand Days Fund. Our main program is training. Our main program is training cutters, and our main purpose is to eradicate stunting. Definitely. And with that, you were just mentioning now, only in a couple of years, less than five years. Oh, it is five years. Yes. Uh, yeah. yes. It's five years. It is five years. <laughs> it's five years. Yeah. Now you're making this uh, community healthcare or mm -hmm. uh, this cadres yeah. academy mm -hmm. to enrich their knowledge. Yes. And then for them, not only training, they go down on yep. the ground and they do their part. Yes. With that said, are you collaborating with any government and also private sectors in this? We would not be able to do this mm -hmm. without government. This has to be, it has to be a concerted effort. Yeah. Right now, we're very happy to know that some villages are already allocating budget to ensure that we're able to provide training for cutters yeah. um, in, in, in their villages or in their areas. Um, we're working with the Ministry of Health, of course. Mm -hmm. They're one of our biggest stakeholders, are also one of our champions as well. We're more than happy to work further with them to ensure that hopefully this can be a policy too, yeah. that making sure that community health workers are supported, are salaried, yeah. they're, and they're empowered. We need to make sure they're confident in their knowledge. Yeah. And so training them and certifying them yeah. gives them that confidence that I am certified, that yeah. I can provide that information. And when they go down to the villages and go down to the homes, because we started this going door to door, mm -hmm. providing this information. And so ensuring that they are also supported and ensuring that that becomes, can you imagine, becoming a policy to ensure mm -hmm. that these yes. community health workers are supported. And again, I don't think it takes that much. We're hopefully going to partner with many people that will hopefully through this, thank you yes. so much for having me, of uh, course, of course. Uh, to create this awareness, yeah. is to ensure that there are going to be more people that support us. Mm -hmm. This online platform that, we'll build, that we're building for the Qadr Academy, we have very smart people in Indonesia. I'm hoping that there are going to be more people that help us to build this. Yeah. What other kind of inf information that will help provide um, provide information for stunting prevention or other health issues that that may arise? Um, you know, this is one one health issue that we have in Indonesia. There are many more. Hopefully, these um, health cadres will be provided with a lot more information to to prevent other diseases. But right now, what we want to focus on is stunting for children in their first thousand days of life. Yeah. So 
last questions. Now, how can if anybody want to help out or be part of yep. one, one thousand days? Like, what? How can we do do that? First of all, um, yeah. Uh, first of all, I think creating that awareness. Just remember that prevention of stunting isn't just throwing food at it. Isn't yeah. just about providing food. It's not going to be solved just by food. I think help me change that narrative. Yes. Help me change that narrative that stunting is not just about a lack of food. Okay. It is about everything else. It's about hygiene. It's about maternal health. It's about exclusive breastfeeding. It's about all these things that make sure that the first thousand days of a child's life, it, he, um, they are provided with the right nutrition um, and the right health um, health care. And then help us also um, create that awareness that community health workers are the key yeah. in Indonesia for many things, especially for pre uh, stunting prevention. And so if, you, if anyone wants to uh, be a part of this, let us know. There are many ways that we can do this. Uh, we, have, um, we have been very, very blessed. And, and in the month of Ramadan, I always say this as well, being very blessed by people who want to help out, whether it's through philanthropies, whether through expertise, let us know what it is that you can provide um, a Thousand Days Fund or how you can help um, in creating that awareness or just by talking about it. Because the more people talk about it, the more people talk about it and create that awareness to change that narrative, that it's not just about lack of food. That's right. Um, that it is about ensuring a comprehensive health care service or health counseling for these children and mothers yeah. in, um, in, in these um, undernourished um, uh, areas then I think we'll, 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 we'll be good. We'll be yes. okay. We'll be able it's to hit that target. Continuous effort, Definitely. that's for sure. Continuous, and sustainable. You know, sustainable, and we wish that we have more time with you. We might just before we conclude this, yes. 2030 is six years away. Yes. After that, you reach the goal. Yeah. Is that it? For no, positive? no, we'll go on. Okay. <laughs> because right now it's we're focusing here. on eastern part of Indonesia, yes. right? There are, Indonesia is very, a very large country. Yeah. We have to make sure that this is across Indonesia. Right now we're focusing on Nusa, uh, and East Nusa Tenggara because it is the highest prevalence. Mm -hmm. But imagine how we would be able to provide these community health workers with the right adequate information for zero stunting all over Indonesia. They're the agents of change of Indonesia. Absolutely. Thank you very right. much, Ibu. Thank you so much for here. having me. We have the 1000 Days Fund Foundation Chairwoman, Ibu Rahim Abdul Rahim. Ibu, it is such a pleasure. We can't wait. I mean, you have this positive and enlightened <laughs> energy. I am you have just so to. blessed to be here next to you. <laughs> can't wait to see you more right here. Thank in the you so much. All right. Thank you so much for being here. Now, we are set for a break. When we return, we'll bring you updates from around the world. Stay here on Sea Morning Show. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. It's a pleasure.